Hello, all my little honeybees. How are y'all today? I have missed y'all so much. So, today I thought I was going to do something new. I think I'm going to do a you versus them in a third party reading. And what I mean by that, hello, Nix. What I mean by that is you as in the divine counterpart, whether you're a divine feminine or a divine masculine, versus them, which is the karmic. I was going to say something ugly, like, you know, I really wanted to say you versus the karmic slut. But let's not call her names or him names, because let's, I, you know, I'm having to remind myself as I say this, sometimes... Or, I mean, every time, actually, when you want to think about it, the karmic is there to teach a lesson. We, that's why it's called karmic lessons. And so, that includes even the karmic person, individual, that thinks they reign supreme, but actually we, as queens, we reign supreme. Yes, ma'am. And I say ma'am because most of my subscribers and viewers are of the feminine variety okay <laughs> so let's start off by this side is going to be us this side is going to be them um now if i start to pull cards or something and it sounds like this sounds more like you and this sounds more like them we'll just flip it in reverse just take it how it resonates for you babe all right so First, I had, I had put some archetypes down here. So, let's see what this one is. This one is, ooh, the destroyer. I like the way that sounds. I will destroy you. No, okay. A little dramatic. Yeah, sure. I'll take that. I'm a cancer son. I'm always a little dramatic. And a little strange, too, since my Aquarius is my moon. So, <laughs> there we have it. Um... <laughs> So, the Destroyer. Wow. So, this is like... Um, so, the Destroyer comes in. And, I mean... It, I love it in the book. Because the book, the first word for this is... The Savage. We are savage. I need that song. I don't care if I'm 49 years old. I can be savage if I want to. I mean, I could be the savage grandma. I mean, hello. But the destroyer. Um, this is talks about the one who has that necessary work to do, even though it's painful. Um, the story pulls the rug out from underneath relationships, jobs, homes, and all forms of security. It is the part of us that wants things to end. Its painful orientation is to uncover our true purpose. It doesn't linger long in comfort zones because comfort zones don't get us any growth. So you are someone who's fully into growth. Even if you have to destroy everything that comes in your way to do so. What I love about this is when you're talking about gods and goddesses, which I'm a goddess, honey. Um, but goddess and goddesses and gods such as Shiva, Kali, you know, those god goddesses are destroyers. You know, and to me, destroyer sounds, you know, it sounds a lot like, um, you know, like fire energy. Because fire energy is like, when you think about a, think about a fire in a forest fire, for example. And I know people have heard me say this before. It comes in and it wipes everything out. But it wipes it all out for new growth to come in. So, I'll take being a destroyer. Okay, let's see what the other one is. Oh, we have the dead end. Okay. Yeah. I see this card and I'm thinking, talk to the hand. I don't want to hear your shit. So this person ain't listening too well. They don't listen to shit you got to say. Now, you and I, we both know that we know what's best. 
but they're not wanting to listen. Let me find this one in the book because I don't know this one. Let me find it. Okay. It says the closed door, the final chapel chapter. So, um, it says reflect on dead ends in your past that led to unimaginable wonders. The moment you accept the ending, a feeling of grace will arise. Doors begin to open, both inside you and in the world. So, um, talks about contrary to what its name implies, the dead end is very much alive. It's a force that stops us from moving forward as planted. So, I understand that because with the karmic, it's like the destroyer, even though it sounds horrible to be called a destroyer, you do things, you get out of your comfort zone for your own spiritual growth. And when you're like, for example, a twin flame and you and your divine counterpart are in growth and here comes in a karmic third party to throw the wrench into the cycle and says, oh, hold up, talk to the hand. Here's your dead end, divine masculine or divine feminine, whoever got um, sidetracked. It's like them, um, it's like that, you know, my mom has two little chorkies means they're uh, half uh, Chihuahua and half um, um, Yorkie. I don't know why I lose my train of thought. Anyways, and so Baby, she's the oldest of the two. There's Baby and Ella May. They came from the same litter. So Baby, when she, she could be outside frolicking, going potty, whatever she's doing. If she sees a squirrel, it's like, squirrel. It's like, Everything just drops. She'll drop the bone in her mouth and go for that squirrel. Even though it runs up a tree and it's a dead end, right? Well, Ella May, she saw that baby's distracted and she done took off with the bone that, uh, that baby dropped. So this is the dead end. You know, it's not going nowhere. It's, you know, there's this has got growth and this has got no purpose. So take it how, how it resonates with you. So, over here we got us amazing goddesses that we are. And, well, I can't find my other little thing, so we'll just stick this right here. And um, maybe stick a stick, a little stone there. Call it a stick. Anyways, that's right. We're up on our pedestal because... We, let me say it again, we are goddesses. Okay, so, let me look and see what is going on with us queen bee goddesses. What's going on with us? So what do we got going on? Let's see. Come on now. So we have the lovers. So we are definitely the divine counterpart. Okay. We are the lovers. Lovers can also talk about um, having to make choices. But I love this card because, you know, they... It's kind of like when um, a male and a female get a matching tattoos, one with a his queen and one with her king. Yeah, that's what them t-shirts remind me of. We have the chariot. So, this connection is still going places. It's still in movement. Page of Swords. 
And uh, so this Divine Feminine, whether you're Divine Masculine watching or Divine Feminine, um, just take it how it resonates. I'm just going to call it Divine Feminine. So this Goddess here, um, she's still, I'm hearing, staying in her lane. She knows where she's going. She's got direction, right? She knows she's on a divine mission, a divine path. She's got a mission to fulfill. And she is staying on track with that mission. But with that power of swords, let me tell you, ain't nobody fooling her, honey. She has her eye on the game. She is spying. She's, I don't want to say spying. She's watching. She's paying attention. Let's get some clarifiers. So we got the two of wands. The six of wands. And the nine of cups. Okay, two of wands. Yeah. She's she's following that. Um, she's following that path. She's got her aims, her sights set. She is following her direction. She's following, listening to spirit. She knows where she's got to go. Six of Wands. She is heading towards victory of that Nine of Cups. That that desire that she wishes for. You know, bottom of the deck is Ten of Wands. She's willing to do, carry out any burden, do anything she has to do, overcome any obstacle that she has to overcome to make sure that this is successful and it happens. So now let's look at how the Divine Masculine, um, what he what he sees and he admires about his divine feminine or shall I say the divine counterpart um, let's see how he or she admires what do they admire about the destroyer these cards are kind of hard to shuffle I love them though they're so cool Okay, what does he admire by it, about the di Divine Feminine, the Goddess? We have the Chariot. So, he admires that she is going for it. She continues to keep going. She keeps her hustle on. She um, is She's going places. She's not allowing herself or the situation to cause her to become stagnant. No, ma'am. The Eight of Pentacles. She's continuously working. I work hard for my money. Mm. Yeah, that's true. We keep working. We, Boo, I'm going to take care of me, boo. I promise you that. We have the Moon. Honey got her secrets too. I promise you that. She got her secrets too. But um <laughs> Don't make don't don't think not for once. Well, I'm actually what I'm hearing is even though she's got all this going to she still has a way of making herself be a little mysterious. I'm hearing he may be a little intimidated by her. It seems like she, she seems to know everything. Everything that's going on. Even those things that he tries to keep hidden from her. Um, she keeps him on her t his toes. Um, yeah. Uh, bottom of the deck is the strength card. So... He admires her strength as well. So I'm going to set these over here. So we can compare what he admires. So now let's look at the dead end. Okay. So what, what's going on with this dead end? What's going on, spirit, with the dead end?
The dead end. The stop sign. The distraction. What's going on with that distraction? We have the Six of Swords trying to... So, the Six of Swords, you know, it talks about... It, it talks about travel, but it also talks about getting out of, like, rough water, heading towards something that's more stable, calmer, trying to find your peace. So she's trying to find some peace. Four of Cups. <laughs> Being dissatisfied, unhappy with the way things is going. I, what I'm seeing in my head is like, you know when you're a teenager and you're just like, Ugh, Mom, I'm so bored. And Mom's like, go wash the dishes. And you're like hanging upside down from the couch going, Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, that's what these remind me of. And then we have the Seven of Pentacles. It's that black swan. That evil, evil thing there. Seven of Pentacles is like, you know, still trying to work this out. Get things done. Maintain the status quo. Even though... Yeah, she's going crazy. Because, I don't know if you ever saw that movie. But, you remember in the movie where she, it reminds me of that too. Where she got the things coming out of her shoulders. She's trying to dig them out. She's going, losing her damn mind. Yeah. So, yeah. she She's getting bored with the whole situation. You know, she's nearly about to pluck her eyeballs out from the boredom. Trying to find peace and trying to find clarity. Trying to move to something that, that has more meaning to it. So then we have the Queen of Cups. The Moon. And the Nine of Wands. So... Wow. Hmm. So she really wants... She really wants some love. Okay. When I look at this card, it looks like... See them dead... It looks like some dead leaves sweeping through there. And... Dead leaves falling. Then down here, you got this spark. So... And then you got this little flower here. But it's just... I'm just picking up the sense that she's really wanting love and time and affection. And everything's just dried up. It's gotten old. It's just... I'm hearing in a rut. It's not as... You know, there's still a little bit of spark in here. But it's not enough to keep the fires, the embers going. I think she's getting a little bored with it now. She's distracted him. She got what she wanted. And now she's getting a little bored. I think she's making some secret plans to run away. Um, we have the Nine of Wands here. I think she's just looking out for her. For her best interest. That's what that dead end is doing. So let's look and see. What, what does that Divine Masculine... What does... He find attractive about her. What does he find attractive about her? What is it about her that keeps him interested? What does he what's he attracted to about her? So we have the King of Swords. The world. The fool. Okay. He finds it attractive that... She 
she's an authoritative. This is the type of female who like wears the pants. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe in the bedroom, maybe she's the one that ties him up and gives him spankings and says, call me mistress or mama or whatever the fuck. Oh, ooh, I'm sorry. Beep. Sorry. Beep that out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this, she calls the shots and she, it's like, it's her way or the highway. It's going to be her decisions, what she chooses, and she has the last word. Period. And I think she kind of keeps him scared by uh, keeping him reined in by... Th I'm hearing like threats or maybe, you know... You don't want to leave me... I will ruin you. I'll be the end of you. But then she alternates it with really playful, um, childlike wonder, laughing and playfulness, teasing. And like, I think he just can't really, oh, bottom of the deck is the wheel. So I think maybe she's like, Maybe authoritative and then maybe crazy. Maybe bipolar. A wheel right there. It's a little bipolar. Stern, playful. Stern, playful. Bitch. You know. She's crazy. And for some reason, he's attracted to this crazy bitch. Okay. Let's look and see. How does he feel about the Divine Feminine? How does he feel about the Divine Feminine? How does he feel about the Divine Feminine? We have the Seven of Swords, the Hermit, and the Chariot. The Chariot keeps coming up again. So, you may have ch uh, cancer somewhere in your sign, in your, in your, may have cancer somewhere in your chart, your natal chart. Okay. The bottom of the deck is the Two of Cups. Ultimately, he feels that she is like a soulmate, um, but there's a lot of love here. However, um, there's this feeling of maybe she packed her bags and hauled ass. Maybe you have, um, he feels like maybe you're not, maybe you're withholding affection and time. You're keeping to yourself. You kind of went into hermit mode. Maybe you're not talking at the moment. Um, and maybe there is a sense of maybe there's some distance here between the two of you. Um, quite possibly you moved away or, you know, you went a different direction than they do. But they, but overall they have this two of cups, this soulmate energy type love for you. But they feel like they can't get to you, is what I'm getting. Now let's see how he feels about the karmic third party.
And when I say third party, I refer to the third party as the karmic person. If you're in a, if you're in, in a um, divine connection. So... We have the Page of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Five of Cups. Bottom of the deck is the Magician. Um, I'm not seeing any love here, to be honest. I see making magic happen. Yeah, we see that. Um, but he feels that you know, she's good on her own. She don't really need him. Um, she's, he feels that she's good on her own, but yet, um, she's really not satisfied with what he's tried to give her. He feels that she keeps tabs on him. And she probably tells him a lot that I, I don't need you. I have you here because I want you here. As soon as I get tired of you, honey, you're gone. And I think that's what she does to him. And she makes him feel like he's not good enough. And he's constantly trying to spark that magic. But I don't see any love here. I just see, you know, don't really see lust either. It's just um, trying to keep things going. Okay. Let's look at shadows and secrets. Now, this may um, <laughs> this may trigger people, so only take the resonate the part messages that resonate with you. I know we only want to look at the shadows and secrets of the dead end, right? But it don't work that way. This is the you versus them. So we're going to look at the destroyer. Okay. Let's look at you, boo-boo. Remember, take only the message that resonates. What is the shadows and secrets of the destroyer? They're amazing. They're amazing. Ones. Okay. Let's see. We have the dog. Ooh. You you go on, you bite hard, don't you? Loves to throw their weight around, often barking orders, but their bark is worse than their bite. Confrontational personality. Lists their wounds when they feel defeated. What I'm seeing here is someone like the, no, I don't I don't think your bark is worse than your bite. I think you're willing to bite. <laughs> I hear it. F with me and I you're not afraid to throw the first punch. Let's just say that. Oh, wild cat. Look at that. Hisses at you when they don't get their way. Spoiled, capricious, impulsive, frequent temper tantrums. I think that you will scratch. You will fight. You're willing to fight. You're a fighter. Grumpy, bad tempered, crabby, irritable disposition. Often wakes up on the wrong side of the bed. Moody, often miserable, triggered easily. Wow. <laughs> the bottom of the deck. The butcher. Entering into a relationship emotionally broken serial heartbreaker will butcher your heart into many pieces. You know what I'm really getting from all this overall is I'm here. Keep effing with me. And I will cut you. I will cut you. <laughs> There's a girl I work with who... um her husband, she's always, tell, she's always telling him, keep it up. Keep it up. I will cut you. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. I don't guess. Please don't cut nobody. And don't really bite nobody because you never know. <laughs> you, can, you can catch things that way. Let's look at the dead end. What is the dead end karmics? What's the karmics, karmics secrets? What's their shadows and secrets? Ooh, what is it they don't want nobody finding out about? Mm. 
Energy Vampire. Look at that. A ghoulish divine feminine who sucks your energy, leaving you exhausted and drained, feeding on the love and compassion you have for her. <gasps> oh. I know you don't feel like you're good enough. Clean Freak. An extreme germaphobe. A potential love interest home must pass the white glove test. Constantly cleaning up the mess and drama they create. Hard to live with. Eternally single. Mm. I get they commit a lot of... I, I think maybe they don't do no cleaning. I think maybe they make the purse, the man or the person they're with do all the cleaning. And deal with their drama. The slob. Couch potato. Sloppy. Watches TV all day. Very lazy. Waste time. Messy home. Messy life. Ignores responsibilities. Doesn't show up for you in a relationship. Bottom of the deck. The lazy bum. Unemployed. Absolutely no ambition. Sleeps all day. Mooches off of you. No efforts in a relationship waiting for you to take the lead. Hi, Nix. Hi. Wow. Okay. Come here, baby. Come here. Mm -hmm. I love you. I know. I'm putting you down. Okay. Now, using these wonderful decks that was created by Rachel with, with um, Angelic Revelation 144. Y'all, she has some amazing decks. You need to check them out. I got a link in my description box for her. Always creating these amazing decks. She's got a pretty cool um, Instagram account, too. She's got a YouTube account. TikTok. Here I am promoting her, and I haven't even promoted myself. Y'all, check out my TikTok. <laughs> check out my TikTok and my um, my Etsy shop and my cards. <laughs> okay. What would the destroyer, what would us goddesses like to say to the dead end karmic? What would we like to say if we didn't hold back? What would we say to the that karmic B word. It is obvious that you overindulge in unhealthy things and lead the ma divine masculine astray. Divine masculine is not in love with you. He has just stayed with you because you kept him codependent. You know that he is in love with me and always has been. At first, I thought you had a lot in common with Divine Masculine, but over the years, God showed me your wicked heart. Divine Masculine fantasizes about me, and he masturbates over me daily. I hear his dirty telepathic thoughts and feel his sexual energy. I think I'm going to pull two more. How can you be so blind to the fact that Divine Masculine is in love with me? Divine Masculine can't resist me. I am always the ultimate temptress to him. Bottom of the deck, you should just make peace and then go your separate ways. I pray for you and wish you well. Aww. See, Rachel knows us divine feminines. Like I can be funny, but when it when it's all truth karmic to me, I know that you're gonna find this weird. But I really love her, cause she's really she can be a good person. It's just you know them lessons. She's a karmic lesson. That's what she is. So let's hear confessions of the puppet master of this dead end.
You know, because truly us Divine Feminines, we really try to love everybody. Some people are just more harder to love than others. Bless their heart. Bless their cold, dead heart. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I have addictions they don't know about. Oh. Bet you hide them. For some reason, I'm seeing someone hide alcohol in a peroxide bottle. That is for somebody. I don't really want him, but I don't want you to be together. Mm. Too bad. No, no, Nix. No, baby. Mama still read. Well, if you insist. Hello. Tell everyone hi. Please get your get your booty out. Come on. Come on. I know. I know. I know, but I'm still I'm still recording, boo boo. We'll have kitty cuddle time in a minute. I'll just hold her with one hand. Okay. I have tried to trap them with a baby. <gasps> they trying to get pregnant. Take him or take him back. I'm so bored. Now what was <gasps> do you see how that worked out? And I said they were bored. They really are bored. They tired of that. I think they are stupid. <laughs> I sexually harass him. And then bottom of the deck. This is hard to do when I got a kitty in my hand. <laughs> bottom of the deck. I love to make them suffer. Well, there you have it. And I guess I'm going to have to end now. Nick says it's kitty cuddle, cuddle time. So, thank y'all so much for watching the video. Don't forget to check out um, my description box with a list of how you can contact me for a personal reading, how you can um, get any of my decks, and also Rachel's Amazing Decks. There's a link down there, too. Have a beautiful day. I love each and every one of you. Bye-bye.